let's proceed to the next talk, the last one of uh, this uh, uh, session. Uh, it is uh, on ubiquitous ratios and their large deviations in reset processes by Francesco uh, Kagi. Mary University of London, UK. Please correct me how to say your name correctly. Thank you very much. It's 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 about right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, it's Francesco Kogi. But that's okay, it. Great, thank you. Okay. Uh, can you now? I'm gonna um, share my screen. Let's see. Uh, I can see it. Okay. Can you see yeah. the presentation? Yeah, we are. I am. All right. Let's let's see if I can put it on full screen mode. Mm -hmm. How is that? Uh, yes. Now. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, so hello everyone. Uh, I'd like to start off thanking uh, the organizers, and in particular Edgar, for giving me the opportunity to to tell you something about my research. Uh, indeed, what I'm going to talk about is uh, is one of my first PhD projects, and it was in collaboration with uh, Rosemary Harris. Um, and it's about large deviations, okay, of a particular observable, which is a ratio, um, in reset processes. Uh, you can find all the information in this uh, in this reference here. Okay, so just a few motivations and a little introduction. Um, uh, actually, this 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 uh, stochastic uh, stochastic reset processes uh, look like to be a very good mathematical tool to um, model many things we see in the real world, like for instance uh, the population dynamics uh, after catastrophic catastrophic events, or even the protein transport uh, the the protein transport in uh, in cells. Uh, but even from not just from a classical point of view, but even from a quantum point of view, one can think uh, of these. Um, Quantum Zeno effect. Um, well, now the um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to a particular observable. Uh, so I'll, I'll be looking at this stochastic reset process that I'll introduce better later. And I'm gonna stick with an observable, which is a ratio between two additive functionals of time. Um, so just a few words about ratio uh, about ratios. Why do I look at ratios? Uh, the thing is that uh, um, they appear. Uh, to be quite ubiquitous in uh, in in, quanti in quantitative sciences, one can think of uh, I don't know in finance they they calculate this Sharpe ratio, which gives you uh, this this um, uh, expected return of an investment you do. Uh, you can find it in you can find it everywhere in probability when calculating this this maximum likelihood estimators, and in particular in uh, uh, when when one looks at uh, more physical uh, topics. Um, you you can find you can find these ratios appearing when talking about thermodynamic uncertainty relations and kinet kinetic uncertainty relations, and uh, here I'll be focusing on a particular example, uh, which is related to this uh, to this uh, stochastic thermodynamics, and uh, it's uh, the fact that uh, a ratio um, there in that uh, in the, that in that environment is 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 an efficiency. Okay, and people have been looking at this this efficiency of small scale engines. Uh, working in these highly fluctuating environments. Here I report a picture. Uh, it's a plot uh, coming from this paper of Verlet. Of Verlet. And uh, uh, on the y-axis, we, we have a particular function that I'm going to introduce later. But for now, uh, you, just, uh, you just have to think about it as, as, uh, as a function that measures how unlikely it's uh, a particular efficiency, which is plotted on the, on the x-axis, is. So, for instance, if you look at the minimum of this function, is um, is is the most typical uh, uh, is, is the most typical value of the efficiency that that is reached, and then the higher you go in this in this function, the the, the less probable is that you see that that particular um, value of the efficiency. In particular, here uh, you should you should uh, um, have I mean you should take a picture with with your mind of this of this uh, take a snapshot of of this picture, and you see that the, the tails somehow are bounded from above, and a maximum appears here. This maximum actually represents uh, the, the most unlikely of, uh, let's say, uh, let, let me quote this, it's the most unlikely uh, efficiency you could see. Okay, this, this is the way it was uh, explained uh, in 2014. Uh, okay, my aim is like to, 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 to put on a firmer footing um, 
these ratios and particular to try to see if it's possible to uh, understand more theoretically this this kind of uh, efficiency that we see in stochastic thermodynamics and I'll I'll, I'll be doing that um, uh, in 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 okay in, in this called the uh, large deviation limit um, oh, a few words on the model I'll be looking at this uh, discrete time reset processes. Uh, a reset process is, is, uh, is this, is this um, process that returns at random times to a fixed internal state. Um, here you can picture this process as a random walk, uh, and even better, uh, for, for the sake of my talk, as a two-layer process. So you have a bottom layer, and we can call it a, an on-off uh, process where you have this Xn, and it's just a sequence of uh, random variables. Each one, of, each one of them uh, is a Bernoulli random variable and with probability R, uh, so it's a Bernoulli random variable taking values either uh, zero or one with probability R. When one appears is because a reset happens. If, there's, if, if Xi is equal to zero, there's no reset. Um, uh, on the top layer, instead, we have uh, the actual random walk in a way uh, and um, and it's it's like summarizing this y n where again we have a sequence of random variables y i's and uh, at time step i we have that random walk take uh, a jump of a certain length uh, y i um, according to a certain probability distribution p okay this probability distribution can be pretty pretty general it may depend on the time since last reset for instance. Um, now, if you take the sum over all these yi's, uh, you get what 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 we can call current, and uh, um, it's basically some sort of uh, you you sum up all, over all the jumps, and you can have some sort of cumulative position, right, of of this random walker. Um, and um, the the nice thing is that, uh, and it's 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 pictured here. Um, the, the reset here happens as a yeah. Just uh, so why yeah. why is here would be the increment in the so that the how much the random walker is jumping or is the value yes. of where is the random walker? No, no, it's exactly the, the first thing you said. It's uh it's the the length of the jump. Okay. Thank All you. right. Welcome. So if you, in, in, indeed if you take this this sum, you have this current. You take the, the sum over all the jumps, you have this current, and when when uh, a reset happens in the bottom layer. Uh, another correlation here in the process is that uh, there's no jump, and this is um, somehow uh, inherited in this in this uh, uh, current as as as, as, a, as essentially the current freezes in time, so there's no change. Then when uh, there's there's no reset, then the current still. I mean, you 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 have new values of of the jumps, and and you see that it, it changes in time. Okay, now the observable I'll be looking at, it's, it's exactly the ratio between this current here, this current here, and the number of reset steps. Indeed, the number of reset steps, of reset steps is just the sum over, over this vector, right? Because if a reset is one, the sum over it is just the number of reset steps. All right, um, now I'll be looking at this observable in, in a particular limit, in the so-called exponential scaling limit for its probability distribution. So uh, if, if we put ourselves in this limit, we see that this probability distribution can be rewritten this way. Um, and in particular, you see now that all the information about the probability distribution, again, in this limit is encoded in this function here, which is called large deviation rate function. Uh, the fact that um, omega n here is our ratio is, um, the ratio between two additive functionals to of time, so two extensive quantities, uh, it makes it not extensive in time. And this um, this is a bit of a problem when trying to do calculations because now uh, uh, using moment generating functions doesn't doesn't seem to work uh, that well. So one has to rely on, on on a different method to calculate exactly this this uh, rate function. And um, just a few words about it. Um, it's the, the method I use is this uh, contraction principle, which is like a, a pretty uh, nice and somehow standard technique in large aviation, where instead of looking at the observable itself um, in its own space, you uh, somehow extend the space and you look to you look to a bigger state space where you consider uh, both the current and the the number of reset steps. 
Now, in this case, uh, it's a, a large deviation principle. It's 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 valid for, for this for this joint observable, and you can write this this probability distribution this way, and then as a as, as an easy saddle point, you get uh, the, the 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 precise form of this rate function i of omega, which is again what we want to calculate. And um, okay, that's it. Now uh, go through the results. Um, so okay, don't get distracted because there are uh, many uh, curves here. Uh, actually, for each one of these plots, we will just focus on on one curve because um, I mean, just just one is representative. Um, the plot the, the plot here um, in, in 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 on the top of the of the of the screen relates to. Uh, uh, a reset process where there's no correlation. Basically, the somehow no correlation. Um, it's quoted. The the only correlation is the natural correlation in the reset process. So so if we have a reset in the bottom layer, uh, there's no jump in the top layer, but there's no other correlation. The probability of uh, the distribution of the jump does does doesn't depend on anything. It's completely independent uh, of time. Um, and we see that the rate function here. Uh, Looks like uh, so. It's it's somehow nice. It's not convex, which is something um, pretty not standard, I would say. Um, and they 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 did again. There's there's a single minimal um, minimum, which is like the typical value uh, of this of this uh, of this um, ratio observable. And then again, if you look at the tails, the tails are bounded from above again. Um, um, if we add some sort of correlations to our model. So for instance, now the probability of the jump depends on the time since since last reset. And this is a kind of short range correlation because in the, in the bottom layer, as I said, we have a sequence of Bernoulli random variables. So what we actually have, it's a geometric process and uh, uh, correlations are exponentially um, short in time. Uh, if, I, if I just take, um, a probability of a jump which depends on the time since the last reset. The correlation we have in the bottom layer are easily inherited by the, the by the top layer, and uh, even in this case, if we take one of these curves, we see again that there's a single minimum, uh, so a single typical value, and then uh, the ratio is is bounded above in the tails. Uh, and this happens actually even if we look at long range correlations. So instead now of um, Having a geometric process uh, of reset, we have somehow a, a sort of heavy reset. We can put, I don't know, uh, a fatted distribution for the reset. And um, we then place a probability distribution which depends on the time since, la since last reset. So now we have long range correlation in our random walk. And we see if we just pick one of these curves again, the uh, the tails are uh, bounded from above. Uh, the only difference here is that the typical value, so the minimum of this function is not uh, is not singleton. There's not there's no a single value. There are many more, but this is not a big deal. Now I go so, quickly through the conclusions. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have two minutes at most, and you're concluding, of course. Okay. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, what I want to 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 say is just uh, I, I I just want to discuss a bit this this pictures here, uh, in comparison with this one. So. We see that uh, in, in, in this study, the rate function uh, is robust because in a way, uh, it's something, okay, this is this I didn't tell you, but uh, in, in other cases, you can actually prove that the, that the rate function you see is differentiable, okay? Um, furthermore, and this is like somehow um, an unnecessary condition for having a lack of phase transition in, in the fluctuations of, uh, of our obs uh, ratio observable. Then again, the tails are bounded from above. Well, also this, this is somehow a universal feature characterizing ratio observables, and uh, it's a signature of the fact that the distribution of our ratio is heavy tailed. Uh, in this efficiency I've shown you in the beginning, uh, the function plot he plotted here on the y-axis is, is indeed a rate function. And again, uh, you see that this, this, um, the, ta oh, sorry, the tails are bounded from above, which means that 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 particular efficiency is uh, heavy tail distributed. And uh, there's just one difference. The fact that here this efficiency, uh, the, the one you usually see when looking at these small, small scale engines has got a maximum. And in all our cases, this maximum did, didn't appear. Well, this is the fact that uh, 
this is the last thing I'm going to say. This efficiency calculated here, it's just the, the output work of this mode scale engine over the input heat, OK? So the fact that the input heat can have both uh, negative and positive fluctuations is indeed, the denominator here can be indeed positive and negative, makes this, this maximum appear as a phase transition between two different uh, regimes in the fluctuations. Uh, I can tell you more about this if you're interested. And uh, we don't have this because our ratio uh, at the denominator uh, it's cannot have negative fluctuations. It's just a positive quantity. So we don't have this maximum for this reason. And that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, we have one question from the audience, from uh, right. Ashwin, I guess. Yeah, Ashwin. Uh, nice talk. Uh, I had a question in the contraction principle um, All right. Um, so I, I, the question is, uh, I, I didn't get the idea where um, where you have a random variable which is not extensive, mm -hmm. but you add a, uh, you add a, another set of variable and you write a joint distribution, and it suddenly becomes extensive. So no, no, no. So uh, it's it it doesn't become extensive. Um, the only thing you do is that you have to find a way um, to calculate this this rate function here. Okay. So um, since you know that this rate, since you know that the, the the observable you're looking at is the ratio of this uh, j and eta, the current over the the number of resets, okay, you 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 can think of uh, moving yourself to a bigger state space where you, where uh, instead of looking at the ratio itself, you look at this uh, current and number of reset steps. Now. Both these quantities are extensive in time, and it's easy to prove a large division principle for this uh, for this um, for this probability for this joint probability distribution. And then it's just a matter of uh, of taking a saddle point approximation to find the good rate function here. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, you're welcome. Uh, any further questions? I guess. Uh, yeah. I guess this is it. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, very interesting uh, set of talks for today. Uh, this is now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it, this is now... Uh